Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul connecting with you today. And it is Thursday. And it is the last day of this week in which I do my live streams. I think it's the 17th of the month. Could be wrong on that, but I think I'm pretty close. And the month is just zipping by fast as we can go. Uh, today, uh, for those that are new, just checking in or watching this as it flips through their newsfeed, <clears throat> I'm going to be focusing on, is the grass greener on the other side? Now, I thought that was a very unusual subject, but as with all of my live streams, I just check in with, you know, guidance and ask, what do you want me to cover today? And <laughs> this is what I heard, is the grass greener on the other side? And so... I said, all right, well, if that's what uh, heaven wants to talk about, then I will go ahead and type it in and see how it comes out. I'm going to get up a moment and turn on another light here. That should bring an additional light to the side of my face. Good. That looks better. Lighting is always important with your camera stuff. <clears throat> it makes a big difference. Okay. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed the last couple of days this week. Had some very good subject matter. Uh, yesterday we focused on forgiveness in relationships. And so if you're new or you missed that one, make sure that you go back to my Facebook page and scroll down a little bit and you'll come across it. As with all of my live streams, they are saved as videos on my Facebook page. And uh, so if you're not a friend, then request to be a friend, like and subscribe. <coughs> and um, then you'll be made notified when I do go live and also at any time you can come back to my page also again if you're new you're one of those folks that are just very very busy but like the information um, you can listen on podcasts okay podcasts are awesome because you can receive the audio into your phone on apps you can get them by emails you can get them a lot of different ways and you can access those by going to my link above the video and clicking uh, follow that to my my own page and then go to my uh, soul my blogs and you'll see exactly how you can uh, access the blogs and listen at this at other times than like now so hopefully your week has been good so far <clears throat> mine's been very very active every morning from the moment I get up until right about now it's just non-stop lots and lots and lots of emails phone calls and texts to respond to so I guess that's a good thing also yesterday uh, the day before that, excuse me, I focused on uh, the Awakened Spiritual Channels program. So again, if you're new, um, the reasons why you should attend that, very simply, if you're out of balance in relationships, if you're out of balance in your health and your finances, if you have stress in your life, then these create blockages in your physical, emotional, mental bodies. And the Awakened Spiritual Channels program clears those kinds of blockages. So you get two beautiful side effects. One is you feel better. You look at life a lot differently. You have a lot less stress when you're done and you have tools to employ towards life to remain stress-free. And then uh, more importantly, when you came to the um, class, you came to open your spiritual channels and you will be a lot further down the road after those practices and wisdom and teachings. So let's see who's joined us today. Facebook feeds gathering pretty slow today. Aloha Janice. Welcome also to Kathy Arnold and Aloha Nelson Fiedler. Thank you all for hitting the share button. Uh, Kristen is, does an awesome job uh, sharing these on different groups, uh, but her hands are kind of tied right now because she can only allow to share so much and Facebook puts her in jail, so to speak. And so thank you, Kristen, for your service. So now we're relying on you guys to help share this information while uh, Facebook's got her hands tied. A welcome also to Sharon Dodd. Aloha, Linda Adam. And welcome, Zilki. Welcome also to Larissa. And aloha to uh, Lisa Carter. Welcome, Vanessa. Welcome also, Monica. And aloha and welcome uh, to Michelle. Welcome, Ilona. <coughs> and aloha, Carl. And welcome, Linda Iloba. Welcome also to Lily Robe and uh, Tammy Lee. Aloha, Megan. And I think I got everybody. All right. So as Facebook is gathering a few more souls, 
we will go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. We're going to start by placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position, which is a hand mudra position. We drop our left hand in front of our heart center. The right hand gently remains pointed towards heaven. Let us close our eyes and let us connect. They're all beings of light serving the planet of the light side, including beloved Mother Earth, all stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, beloved masters and ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifu, saints, buddhas, and bodhisattvas, Jesus and Mother Mary, beloved Amitofu and Konyan, our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. We love you all, honor you all, deeply respect you. We ask you to please be present at this time. And we ask in whatever way is most appropriate for your assistance today in the guidance, the wisdom, and the teachings. Dear the soul of the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony transmitted to all souls in all universes, we love you, we honor you, respect you. We ask you to please turn on in all souls in all universes and we invite all souls to chant with us to join heart to heart, soul to soul, and to release blockages that inhibit us as one humanity of becoming one in love, peace, and harmony. We are very, very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So again, for anybody new watching this or listening for the first time, this is a mantra. This is a healing instrument. And you can learn more about this and download this song at lovepeaceharmony.org. And it is recommended you play it 24-7 in your world. It will make a big difference. <clears throat> so please join in. Let us serve. Lu la lu la li lu la lu la la li lu la lu la li lu la lu la li lu la lu la li lu la Wo ai wo xian er ling Wo ai zhan ren lei Wang ling rong er mu shi shang Xiang ai ping on a xie Xiang ai ping on a xie I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. <coughs> how? How, how? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So welcome to uh, Karine Koto. And welcome also Missy Dodd. Aloha and welcome to Lisa Zarniak. And everybody else, if I missed you, thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing, letting other people know about this. So, uh, why is the grass greener on the other side? Or is the grass greener on the other side? It's a reasonable question. It's one that almost all of us, in maybe different language and lingo, find ourselves asking as we look at those that don't appear to be suffering. We look at those that tend to have everything that we might want or desire and certainly in some cases don't don't look like they would deserve it um, welcome also Francis Myers and welcome Vanessa there are plenty of occasions in our life as we grow up as we awaken as we process through life <coughs> welcome Chelsea welcome also Neketa and as we witness um, many things that do not seem fair, do not seem right or righteous, uh, do not align to our comprehension and understanding 
of what we know about our present comprehension of life which by the way our present comprehension of life is is um, it's individual and it is based upon our individual upbringings wisdom and teachings and so if we grew up in a certain belief system it might say that those who do for others have the greatest benefits another belief system might say look out for yourself if you don't take care of number one you're never going to get anywhere and in some cases that second belief system seems a lot more true because those that grab and claw to the top and throw everybody aside step on people on the way to the top only take care of themselves they appear to have everything that they need they appear to be in greener grass than a lot of us and so it is the witnessing in many cases of those things that we with our with our current understanding that we run through a judgment system and a, a processing system uh, that is unique to each and every one of us that might say you know that's just not fair how can God let that happen how come I don't have something uh, better in my life I have done this and this and that and still I am suffering here and here and there so part of the dilemma of understanding is the grass greener on the other side or is it greener where we're at has to do with the way we look at life because the way we look at life dictates our own future it dictates everything if we look at life through the glasses that we're wearing and those glasses are a representative uh, symbol if you will of all that we have ever learned and we see it as injustice unrighteous or you know why God why them and why not me I'm doing everything I can you know I'm busting my tail at work I'm giving everything I can I go out and I serve after I get out of work and da, 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 and yet I still get nowhere and so this brings us to a place of discontent and lack of gratitude and it's very easy in those kind of emotional places and those kind of worn down beaten up down trodden kind of mindsets and places that we all and at some level have found ourselves in it might not be today maybe it is for some of you but at some point in our lives and possibly at some point in the future we could all find ourselves in that place in those very low places those unpleasant energetic emotionally non-supportive places we find it very easy that the grass is greener on the other side that uh, those over there have it better off than us this leans towards uh, a, pr a problem area that will not serve us individually or collectively it leans towards a victim thinking that you're a victim of circumstances outside of you and it leans away from responsibility uh, and when we start adopting that kind of an understanding that kind of a when we start agreeing to that kind of a perception then it's very much like driving through life with mud on your windows blaming the mud instead of hitting the windshield wiper and seeing again you know I can't drive because of the mud it's the mud's fault it's got to be the mud's fault it's the rain it's the dirt outside they got wet it's the car in front of me that threw the mud up on my window it's definitely the mud's fault so when we place things outside of us the correlation to that is I'm a victim and everyone and everything else outside of me uh, is somehow better than I am somehow um, I am not loved or worthy in the God's eyes and we have these different thinkings that can happen to us um, 
Somehow I deserve this. People say that sometimes. I deserve this. Okay? These are looking through very um, colored glasses. And those glasses are tainted by misinformation. They are tainted by a lack of understanding of who you are and who you are in the bigger picture. Because truly, if you were awakened or more awakened, you would take off your glasses or hit the wiper and knock off the mud off the window and see clearly and not be making those kinds of unpleasant statements. <clears throat> Life brings us a great deal of ups and downs, a lot of yin, a lot of yang, a lot of pain and unpleasantness, a lot of joys and happiness. We have plenty of opportunities to be grateful and plenty of opportunities to be sorrowful and hateful. And that is the nature of life. That is the nature of what we live in. Some of the advanced spiritual doctrines that are out there state that the only way that a soul can rapidly increase on the soul journey, can rapidly elevate their awakening and awareness, is through opposites, through dichotomy, through um, positive and negative experiences because it is in the extreme opposites where great movement occurs we have a tsunami in japan what occurred great coming together people serving each other a uh, great awakening around the world donations and service coming in so a great atrocity created a great togetherness. In the higher level spiritual doctrines that, it, that, that are throughout all the different teachings throughout the world, whenever we have a significant uh, unpleasantness in our life, it creates a dramatic shift. Now the dilemma becomes not all of us um, rise to that occasion where we take advantage of the greatest potential of that shift for a good half of the people that are the believers of the grass is greener on the other side they fail to take advantage of the opportunity that was presented to them in the form of an experience that was viewed and seen as unpleasant and not deserved uh, or on some level they were the victim it is the inability to see any and everything that comes to us with more awakened eyes that causes it to be hated and um, given a lot of negative attention to for when we give uh, hatred and victim mindsets and negative attention to those things that enter our life we are empowering it we must remember that as souls as individual stars we are all literally like supernovas as a soul from creator we have all been infused with creation abilities what we think is what comes to fruition. We we'll replace our focus is what comes to fruition. Our karma falls into that structure. We are all created with the ability to manifest um, whatever we place our focus upon. And the only thing that can knock that off uh, is a couple of things. One is our own thoughts. We can think something and expect it, and then our own thoughts can knock it off, and our own karma. Our spiritual debt can get in the way of what we're wanting to manifest. So there's a couple of things that I'm trying to describe uh, visually so that you can wrap your mind around it and work with it. 
and that is that we are all creators of our exact little world that we operate in. I'm creator of mine, you're the creator of yours, and they're very unique individual worlds, and yet we collectively come together. And in our own individual worlds, we have a choice. Is the grass greener on the other side or is it not? That choice is a choice. It is not anything outside of our control. The victim stays in the place where it's outside of their control. The person that puts everything outside of them, even God, we place God outside of us. Yet we are inside the heart of God and God is inside our heart. It's another uh, spiritual conundrum, if you will, where we are inside of the heart of the divine. The divine is inside our heart. Well, is God outside of us or inside of us? Both. So when we start placing these things outside of us, problems, everything looks much better than wherever we're at. This is the opposite of an awakened, of where an awakened person should be. So in order to move from a place of victim, a place of putting blame in any way, shape, or form outside of us, and um, being in a mindset that uh, that person over there or those people over there or, or any time that their conditions are better than mine, any time we allow ourselves, because it's our responsibility, to go to that place, then we are giving up our control of our creation. We are basically letting uh, life outside of us control us, therefore we've given up control of our creation. Does that sound like fun to you? Do you really want to give up the control of your creation? How has it worked for you so far? Right? We are individually responsible. We simply need to recognize that each thing that enters our life in the current moment everything that has entered our life in the past that we have judged as good or bad, and everything that will enter our life in the future is all connected to our creation process. The grass is not greener on the other side. It only looks greener because of the misperceptions and the lack of responsibility that you may or may not be holding on to. So the awakened person would look at today's series of events, the pleasant and the unpleasant, the unpleasant uh, communication with the coworker, the pleasant drive home, the unpleasant memory of something negative that happened, the pleasant communication with the dear one. All of these will happen in the same day and a combination of them. What matters the most is you and how you look at everything because you are the creator of your life not someone or something outside of you and you have a huge amount of control far more than you could ever imagine you have extraordinary power and ability to dictate what will happen in that next moment but most people don't realize that they have that power, that they can dictate the very next moment just by how they look at things, how they respond to things, how present they are to an experience or an event. There is a, a story that some of you have heard, some of you haven't, and I'll paraphrase it as best as I can. Um, so there was, in the ancient times, a the wealth of a family of a of a, those that lived in a little village was based on the number of livestock they had and the prized livestock was horses because horses meant that you were wealthy and so um, <clears throat> one day a farmer and his son were out uh, outside farming their land and a wild horse jumped inside their gates and started grazing inside their gates. And other farmers uh, in the village saw that. They said, my God, how incredibly lucky you are. Wealth just jumps into your lap. What a lucky man you are. And the simple farmer said, 
Maybe it's lucky. Maybe it's not. The next day, they woke up. Horse is gone. And the neighbor said, oh, such bad luck. That's terrible. And the farmer said, maybe it's lucky. Maybe it's not good luck. I don't know. And then the next day, the horse came back, eating inside there. And the people said, oh, the horse came back. You must have the tastiest grass in the village, came back to your place. You are a very lucky man. He keeps coming back. And the young boy decided that he wanted to ride the horse. He was a, you know, adolescent teenager. And so he got on top of the wild horse and the wild horse bucked him off. And the boy landed on his leg in the wrong way, <laughs> broke his leg. And the other farmer's friends, neighbors said, oh my God, such bad luck that your son broke his leg. Now he can't help you farm. You might have a very unpleasant uh, winter if you can't collect the crops and the farmer said maybe it's lucky maybe it's not and the next day they woke up and there was an entire herd of horses that had come into the yard wow the neighbors were so jealous wow you are so lucky farmers maybe I'm lucky maybe I'm not guess what happened the next day all the horses were gone. Maybe I'm lucky, maybe I'm not. But that following day, something different happened. The uh, monarchy of the kingdom decided they were going to have a war and they were collecting all the able-bodied men. And the old men didn't help them, but they needed the young men. And so they were coming to the town and they were just grabbing all the young men. There was no questions asked. It was part of the priority. You live in the kingdom, you have to serve. And they came to the farmer's house and said, we need to collect your young boy. We have his name here. And so the boy hobbled to the front with his broken leg. And they looked at one look at him and said, he can't help us. And they moved on down the road. Guess what the neighbor said? Oh, you're so lucky that your boy broke his leg. So what is the message? The farmer did not look at everything through negative eyes. He did not look at it through any eyes, a judgment-free set of eyes. What does that have to do with creation? Your individual creation in your life, what does that have to do with the grass is greener on the other side? If you allow whatever comes to you to be seen like the eyes of the farmer, maybe it's good, maybe it's not. You have a car accident. Oh, it's terrible. Maybe, maybe not. It could be that as a result of that car accident, you were able to get that $3,000 that you need. It was only a minor fender bending anyway, and you don't really care if the car is, is specialty, you know, perfect look, but you got that $3,000 you were needing. At first, you might have said, oh my God, not another thing. Maybe it was good, maybe it was not. A great deal of it is completely dependent upon your perspective. Why? Because you are a creator. In order to create the future that you most desire, you must, must, must be responsible for your thoughts, your words, and your actions, especially in every new moment. Because when you are responsible, in every moment for your thoughts, words, and actions, especially when those things that don't look so good happen, then you are saying, I trust that whatever is occurring is occurring for my highest and best interest. I am not going to uh, judge it. I just know somehow it will work out for the best. I don't know why or how, I just know it will. Don't you think that mindset will serve your future creation much, much better? How many of us actually bring that to the table with every event that's ever occurred in our life? Very few of us. What we must remember is that our karma is not perfect. If it was, we wouldn't be here. We'd be hanging out up in heaven with Buddha and Jesus and all the other enlightened beings. So it's not perfect. 
That means we're here. That means we have the opportunity to grow, not the opportunity to suffer because that's looking at the glass as half full. That's looking at very dark and tainted glasses. We have to look at life as an awakened person, as one that sees everything as relevant and everything as a piece of the puzzle. Because that event, whatever it is, somehow will bring something better to me. I don't know what it is now. It could be that a piece of karma had to complete itself. And because you did not react to it, it did complete itself. Therefore, it won't screw with you moving forward. Okay? What you don't know is very important to acknowledge. Uh, there's a statement in some of the higher circles. What you don't know that you don't know is the most important thing to acknowledge because that person is a humble and a person that is always staying awake when we uh, recognize that there is no such thing as it's better over there that those people have created their experience I am creating my experience I am not in any way, shape, or form responsible for their experience, and they are not in any way, shape, or form responsible for mine. I can choose to assist them from my own choice to manifest what they desire, and they can choose to assist me. I can allow it. But they have their creation. I have mine. That's all I am responsible for. Now, if we choose to serve others unconditionally, this is the highest key. This is the hardest one for humanity to grasp because we're very much stuck in a me, me, me world. We're very much stuck in a take care of myself world. I am very guilty of this. I have so much purification to go in this arena. A lot more service is necessary. But, you know, I'm not judging myself. I'm recognizing the areas where improvement is needed without judgment. You have your own version of that. When we take the highest teaching, which is to be available, not be a rug, not be a doormat, but to be someone that is willing and able to offer service where possible, to assist others where possible, when possible, as possible, without necessarily bringing harm to our own health or wellness. Uh, even, even if we do something that might truly harm our own finances, like we can't pay our rent, then we want to be careful. Share what you can, but, but be reasonable at the same time. Um, then what happens is heaven takes care of us naturally. Why? Because we're following uh, the natural law. The big way is extremely simple. We take care of the divine. The divine takes care of us. What is the divine? The divine is everyone. The divine is everything. We simply operate in a creative state and being of value to our own life by not making mistakes in our thoughts, words, and actions, uh, helping our own life along by not creating future creation that we don't want more of. How do we not create future creation? Watch our thoughts, watch our words, watch our actions. And when things do happen, don't judge or criticize them. Work through them with love and gratitude. In that way, we are in a positive control of our creation. Then, when we simply do our best to serve others, we are creating a virtuous condition in which heaven takes care of us. And that's why the farmer's son had the accident, so that he wouldn't have to go to war and lose his life. Heaven saw this way before the farmer did, but the farmer had enough awakeness where he did not judge the conditions. He was the observer he was the one that allowed things to occur as they were without judgment or criticism, but at the same time did not put negative energies into it because the minute we put negative energies into it, what does that do to our future manifestation? It has been said in many of the advanced doctrines that the moment we, cre we, we I want this, this is what I want, in that moment it is instantly created. That's a hard one for us to grasp. But I do believe that is true. I'll tell you another thing that I believe is true. You may not have to agree with it. Um, and it's not Master Shah's teaching. This is one that I've come to believe. <clears throat> that when we cross over, yes, uh, we, we go through a process of reconnecting to source and whatever level that we're supposed to go to, whatever level that looks like. But in the soul form, where we place our thoughts 
is where we can go instantaneously. You think of your grandma, she's there, right? You think of Jesus, is Jesus only in front of you? No, Jesus is in front of all 500,000 people that thought of him in that same moment. Same thing when people think of Buddha. Is Buddha limited to one person? No, Buddha is everywhere. Because at the level of soul, there is no such restriction as time and space. Souls can be everywhere instantly. That is the nature of being in the soul world. Here in the physical plane, there is a dichotomy called time and space. So when you think of something positive, I'm going to manifest this. There is time between that manifestation and when it comes. So it, a statement is, the moment you think about it, it's, it happens. Okay, I believe that's real. Because in the soul world, I believe that's real. And it's real here. What causes it from coming? Our mindsets, attitudes, beliefs. We interrupt our own positive manifestation. We interrupt it because we are not aware of these higher understandings that we are aware of when we're in the soul world. There is no time and space in the soul world. It's instantaneous. People are here, people are there. You know, in the soul world, it's instant. So one of the most important trainings is that here on the physical plane Earth, we must, must, must be much more responsible for our thoughts, our words, and our actions for our creations. And don't beat yourself up if you forget. Don't, you know, 30 minutes into it, after you're beating yourself up and lamenting, da 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 then you stop and you go, oh my God, I can't believe I've been beating myself up. You're such a fool. Why did you do that the last 30 minutes? That's not helping you either. You just see it whenever you see it. And you forgive yourself. You ask forgiveness for all the monkey mind negative thoughts that you gave the last 30 minutes and you laugh at yourself and you say, okay, how can I repair this and think of something positive? Don't spend any time at all on negativity once you see it, okay? It is a constant process of reminding yourself of being in the present moment, in your thoughts, in your words, in your actions. And it's not a race, it's a lifetime. When you take the time now and you bring yourself to each moment in the present with a happiness, with a gratitude, even when something that can be seen by others and possibly yourself as unpleasant or negative, even when or if that occurs and the possibility of it happening is reasonable, you still need and have the ability, the choice, because we all have choice, of how to respond. Remember the farmer story. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. Everything has a reason. Maybe it's something that heaven is bringing to me so that a positive that I can't see could occur. Maybe uh, it's something where a karma is wrapping up and I had to receive this so that I don't have that anymore. Great. I'm extremely happy about that. I don't have to deal with this anymore. Matter of fact, I'll do a quick forgiveness practice to do my best to ensure that this doesn't happen anymore. And I'm going to have a positive outlook moving forward because this one is now done. Everything is how we are in the present. When it comes time for you to cross over, because you have practiced this your life, when it comes time to go into a meditation, when it comes time to do any higher level spiritual practice, because you are practicing this, your spiritual channels will be far more open. Uh, you will be able to much more easily and effortlessly travel the universe, hang out with Buddha, hang out with Jesus, hang out with God. It will be much, much easier because your mindsets, attitudes, beliefs won't get in the way. You will have cleared between here and the time you cross over, huge amounts of spiritual debt. You will have gained huge amounts of virtue. All because you chose to be present. All because you chose to not react and not respond in a way that acts like you're out of control. You will discover that when you're doing this process, you will catch yourself um, acting out something that dad did acting out the way your mom responds, acting out the way one of your peers responds. You'll actually hear their words in your ear 
when you're looking at something and you're, you get that knee-jerk auto response and you go, ah, uh, I see it. And then you, you stop and you go, wait a minute. That's what dad used to say. Oh, I guess I better work on this one and release that old information because that's obviously not true and it's not serving me. So you do a forgiveness. You forgive your dad for uh, giving you this incorrect education. You forgive yourself for using that incorrect education this last 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. And you laugh about it. And you move forward with gratitude. It is a marathon, not a race. And it is something that will make your life be the one that your grass is the greenest. Your grass is the one that everybody wants to come to. They won't know why you're always so happy. They won't know why you're always so positive. They won't understand why whenever they complain to you, you offer them a perspective that they never considered. They won't understand why when they complain to you, you'll have a reasonable answer. Now, they might want to stay in their pity world, but that's their choice. That's their creation. All you can do is take care of yours. When you start taking care of yours, life will just get a little bit better each and every day. No one is responsible for you except you. This wisdom is not new. It's been stated by many, many great beings and probably hundreds if not thousands of books prior to me regurgitating it and stating it in this way. So it's not new information. It's information that will uh, give you a little bit more to bring into your life each and every day. If you can activate five, ten percent of it, awesome. You know, you just keep going at it a little bit by little bit by little bit. So, in conclusion, is the grass greener on the other side? If you have that mindset, attitude, or belief, immediately recognize you are out of control of your creation. You are allowing yourself to remain a victim. Second step, choose to no longer adopt that mindset, attitude, or belief. Choose to be in your world and forgive all those in the past and forgive yourself. Choose to positively look at everything that comes to you and uh, see, as they say, the silver lining. But how do you see the silver lining? You don't judge it. It's just an experience. Maybe your karma brought it to you. Maybe it's a good thing at, that's being um, wearing sheep's clothing and it won't reveal itself for a little while. Okay? This allows you to control your future process, to control your future thoughts, words, and actions. And when you do that consistently, it's very difficult for your future not to get brighter and brighter and brighter. Right? So watch yourself. Bring more gratitude to the table. Pay attention when those negativities come up and get clarity on the origination of them. When did you decide to accept that as a truth? Where did that teaching come from? Go backwards, clear it, okay? Forgive it, let it go, rewrite the script. Choose positivity, choose gratitude. It's very simple, but it takes consciousness and awareness and a agreement to be present. So for those that came in a little late, um, I encourage you to watch this again. <clears throat> I'm going to, let me see what I'm going to do now. So we're going to ask um, the divine love peace, harmony, rainbow light ball to come to us. And this is exactly what it sounds like. It's a rainbow light ball. It's in heaven and it can come anytime you call upon it. Uh, if you have open spiritual channels, you'll easily see it. If you don't, you have to work with trust and whatever your body can feel. Regardless, it comes and it comes to serve unconditionally. It is a unconditional universal servant. It is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All you need to do is remember what its name and remember to call it. The Divine Love, Peace, Harmony, Rainbow Light Ball. Okay? So 
I will lead us through this calling of this rainbow light ball. You can repeat along with me and we will use it to serve us to release some of our negative mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, those things that are inhibiting us from being in the moment, release some of the victim attitudes, release some of those things that are keeping us from being present. And we will ask it to give us uh, guidance moving forward so that we can choose correctly for our future. All right. So please, if you're comfortable, repeat after me. Place your hands in soul light, soul surface, hand position. Left hand in front of the heart center, right hand remain pointed towards heaven. And repeat after me. Dear the divine, love, peace, harmony, rainbow light ball, in heaven, I love you, honor you, and appreciate you. Could you please come to me? Could you please surround me and bless me? Please help me to release any old pattern thinking, karmic thinking, thoughts, words, and actions that do not serve me to be awake and aware and in the present moment. Please help me release patterns of automatic negative responses, patterns of automatic judgment and criticism. Please help me release patterns of self-judgment and self-degradation. Could you please also bless me as appropriate to be conscious, positive, and filled with gratitude for anything that comes to me so that no matter what happens in my life, I do not judge it. I am not critical of it, that I see somehow it has come to serve me. Please help me to look at every event that comes into my life from this much higher awakened perspective. Continue to repeat. Dear all souls of humanity, all souls in all universes, if I or my ancestors have ever offered you inappropriate thoughts, words, or actions that have caused you to think negative, to be fearful of the future, to be a victim of circumstances. If I or my ancestors have ever taken advantage of you, stolen from you, lied, cheated, hurt, killed, or done anything that has caused you to be a victim and out of control of your future, I humbly and sincerely apologize. There is no excuse. I simply ask from the bottom of my heart for your forgiveness. I wish to offer all souls my unconditional forgiveness if they have brought into my life unpleasant conditions, incorrect teachings, or any thoughts, words, or actions that caused me to have the wrong thinking of being a victim of life. I unconditionally forgive all of you. So now let us chant while we visualize the divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow light ball in our heart center surrounding our body. And as it spins, watch what direction it spins, the rainbow light ball, and watch it clear these kinds of blockages. Enjoy it with a smile and gratitude. Let us chant together. Divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow light, ball 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 <coughs> divine love, peace. Harmony, rainbow, light, ball, divine, love, peace. 
Harmony, rainbow, light, bow, divine love, peace. Harmony, rainbow, light, bow, divine love, peace. Harmony, rainbow, light, bow, divine love, peace. Harmony, rainbow, light, bow, divine love, peace. Harmony, rainbow, light, bow, divine love, peace. Harmony, rainbow, light, bow, divine love, peace. Harmony, rainbow, light, bow, divine love, peace. Harmony, rainbow, light, bow, divine love, peace. Harmony, rainbow, light, bow. Divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow, light, ball. Divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow, light, ball. Divine love, peace, <coughs> harmony, rainbow, light, ball. Divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow, light, ball. Divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow, light, bow. 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 Divine love. Peace, harmony, rainbow, light, bow. Divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow, light, bow. Silently, continue to visualize, continue to chant, and I will offer you a divine flow as to what is occurring at this time. Continue to chant silently. Divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow, light, bow. So the divine source, love, peace, harmony, rainbow light ball is spinning in each one of you. It has come for some of your individual requests. And for most of you, it is clearing blockages in your mind, in your livers, releasing anger, irritation. For some, it is releasing fear in the kidneys. For others, there is significant grief and sadness, and this has caused negativity and negative mindsets. And it is clearing these blockages in both the lungs, the mind, and the heart. For some, there are blockages in the neck having to do with the fifth soul house chakra. This has to do with your inability to speak your truth, the inability to share what you want to share. You have been holding it inside, and great pain, judgment, criticism, and victimhood has been stuck because of the blockages in the fifth chakra. This area has also impacted your heart, making it more closed, and impacted your mind. So the divine love, peace, harmony, rain ball, light ball is also clearing blockages in these areas as quickly as it can. There is a team of seraphs, seraph, seraphs like little angels, that all have these scrolls, and these scrolls carry a, a positive, forward-looking, gratitude-filled messages. And they are uh, showering everyone with these gratitude-filled scrolls. They are placing them in your heart center, and they are like time-released. And so when an event occurs, if you are able to uh, stop the um, unpleasant response, then they kind of they pop up and they're like, this is how you can think about this, and this is how you can think positively about it. And so these have been uh, released to you as part of this blessing. Huge, huge, huge blessing. Let's chant for a few more minutes. 
Divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow light, ball 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 divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow light. Ball divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow light, ball divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow light, ball divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow light, ball last round, divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow light. Ball divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow light, ball and divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow light, ball and divine love, peace, harmony, rainbow light, ball. Pay attention. I'm feeling very warm. How are you feeling? Do you feel any vibration in your head? What about in your heart? Is your mind empty now versus when you started? Are you feeling a bit more hopeful and a bit more grateful now? Please share. Wonderful, a lot of uh, good comments coming in. Christina says she heard a cherub once. Um, yeah, th these were cherubs. I couldn't grab the name. They, they, they told me the name was Seraph. Seraph, Seraph or Seraphim, something like that. But it looked like a cherub to me. Um, Larissa, she felt so joyful and light, truly blessed, deeply grateful. <coughs> and Lisa Carter, uh, a churning in her second soul house, Lower Don Tian. Um, Joyce Ann, I have a headache. So the blockages are keep, keep moving, Joyce Ann. Keep chanting. Give it another 5-10 minutes. It'll clear. Um, Vanessa, her auric field was spinning and felt warm. And Ram Sarup, welcome. Uh, Sarah, Siphon, Siphon says Christina. Yeah, possibly. Spot on in the neck issue, says Andy. Yeah, that one kind of caught me off guard too when the uh, information was coming in that this was happening for people. Um, Joey Sands said she felt warm. Monica, she saw a third eye. She's spinning. Very grateful and more peaceful, says Shelly. Peaceful and happy, says Kristen. Wonderful. So a lot of good condensed wisdom in this live stream. When heaven gave me the flow this morning, I'm like, really? You want me to do something on the grass is greener on the other side? I don't know of any of that in Master Shah's books, but I'll do the best I can. So I hope it served you. Uh, it's basically a condensation of uh, the various wisdom that I've gathered through this life. Certainly not something that I practice on a moment to moment basis, something I aspire to, no different than anybody else. But you know, together we can move mountains a lot easier than individually. So we do it together, right? Each of us do our part waking up and then uh, that assists the whole. So, read some more comments here. Uh, Joy San felt peace. Kathy Arnold said she saw cherubs flying in when her mother died and she was screaming in such pain and she saw baby angels. <coughs> and then Shelly, uh, did help. Great. Thank you, Master Paul. You're very welcome. And so, um, this is the end of this week's live streams. I will be back next week. Final calling to all those, especially anybody new, not aware of it. I am releasing a new 12-week Awaken Your Spiritual Channels program. Uh, it will give you the much higher opportunities to speak with heaven, guides, angels, and saints, and actually hear them and understand them, possibly open your third eye. And the beautiful side effect for virtually everyone that came to the class is better health, better energy, better relationships, uh, some people had better finances or conditions that allowed for better finances. Uh, pretty much across the board, they come out the other side feeling better. So if that's adventurous to you, 
uh, please uh, follow through my, my link up above. Uh, it's on the home page of my website. You just scroll until you see uh, Awaken Spiritual Channels program, and then you'll learn more there. Um, it starts February 4, and uh, it, it's priceless. It's a very good program. I hope you, uh, you take advantage of it. Judy Parker still having divine love, peace, harmony, light, all turning slowly around her, feeling more clear, more peaceful, and welcome to sell. So for those that came in late, you missed a good one. Please go back and watch again. If you're new, um, do like and subscribe, then you'll know when I go live. Also, you can't really scroll back in my timeline, at least I don't think you can until you like and subscribe. Um, and if you're better off with podcasts, go to my website listed above and go to my blog on the website and you'll see how you can receive all this same uh, live stream information via podcast. So thank you, Kristen, for posting um, my Awakened Spiritual Channels program link. Uh, you can look where it says my name. Uh, Kristen is posting under me. Thank you, Kristen. So I offer you my greatest love. I say thank you, Divine Tao Source. Thank you, all beings of light, stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, Mother Earth, all angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, sin masters, lamas, sifas, gurus, saints, buddhas, bodhisattvas, Jesus and Mother Mary, Kuan Yin, Buddha. Thank you all. All those non-mentioned, all of our heaven's teams. Please respectfully return. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.